Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Professor Hall Grote back to present to you my 28th instructional DVD. Today we're going to explore this uh, classic set of uh, metal roller skates. They're probably from about a half a century ago. All right, we're looking down at my glass palette. And just for a quick review, I want to introduce some of the colors I'm going to be using within this painting down the road. Well, we have here a large tube of titanium white. And then we'll probably be using a little bit of cadmium orange at some point. Along with that is a tube of uh, cadmium red deep hue. So just take that overall umber and push it all around. Okay, now we're going to use this number four bristle brush to actually sketch out these skates and try to fill up the entire canvas as much as possible. And one thing I want you to think about when you're looking at this composition I have set up is imagine everything sort of inscribed, surrounded with one line. Think about that one shape that all of these objects can fit into. You can leave up, overlaps that, and it comes across. And that gets wider, and then it goes back. It's going to taper, and there's going to be eventually a lock over here, a dark spot, and then I had the light area here. And then what happens? Look at them just scumbling the two together. They create a transition, a half tone transition right there. And I'm noticing this actually. Okay, this comes across like that, then it comes down a little bit. Same way, this actually bows in more. See, I can bring the greenish red right down through like that, and then paint right back on top. Same number three brush. Maybe I'll clean it off better to indicate these lights right along the uh, sides of these leather straps. For that we'll use a little bit of the uh, cad orange white, maybe a tinge of red. So there's over here, then a few back here, and then obviously the uh, rear skate. So I'm going to grab some titanium white, some cad orange, maybe a tiny bit of red. So it's sort of like an, a red orange, orange red. Let's see how that works. Actually, the more I think about it, I want to bring it down a value. It's a little bit too light. So I'm using a little bit of yellow ochre. Feel free to experiment. See what works best for you. So you can see how I put my left hand fingers down like that. Hold the brush underneath. Actually, no, I'm going to hold it like a pencil in this case. Just to rest. I mean, a lot of artists use mull sticks, but I've always liked this, or sometimes I'll just use an old stick. And then I'm going to start, let's see, right about here. Just bring that around, and then it's going to come to the front. Yeah, because we see this side of the uh, strap, and then we see the back side. A few areas I'm just overlapping strokes to sort of thicken up the line I just made. Then this comes down, all the way down to here, then this basically fades out into darkness. And since we're up here, I might as well indicate a little bit of the depth up here too. Where the strap wraps around the front face of the skate. Some of that's wet so it blends in nicely. And then there's actually a little bit of highlight back here where I had that uh, foundation mark. So that. What happens if your mark becomes too abrupt? Just take the end of your single O1 brush and just blur the two ends of the mark right here and here. 
Same brush, same white, indicate some of the highlights on the key ring. So let's see right there. And there's a little bit on the front here. Now I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to put some paint right down on the end of the paintbrush like this. So the paint is actually hanging off the very end of the brush. Not the side with the bristles, the handle side. So then I'm going to take that paint, just the very edge of the glob, I'm going to sort of drag it. So you're actually using it as a scribing tool. This is a way to get an extremely thin highlight A few cases, like where this uh, warm leather band is, look at I can take my brush and sort of just come across real lightly and it sort of softens that edge. And in some cases, the cool color comes right across, which is fine. It's a nice technique to sort of subdue a few hard edges. But way back near the beginning of this painting, I was suggesting at some point we may decide to make this green into sort of a grassy area. I was breaking the edge of that wheel. That makes the wheel look more natural, like it's resting down in. Look at, I can come up like this. Maybe a few breaking up into this cast shadow. break this edge a little bit. Now I'm actually coming in with a little bit of yellow ochre on my brush. 